Pujiri Gumaru. My name's Aisha. And Pujiri Gumaru, I'm Mani. So today we're going to be looking at indigenous weaving, both from this country and worldwide. But we'll most importantly be looking at the South Coast weaving um, from Gadigal country where we are today. So before we get started, I'd like to pay my respects and acknowledge the Gadigal people as the traditional owners of this land. As it is NAIDOC week, we are acknowledging that it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And I'd also encourage you to um, extend that respect and welcome to any mob watching today. So what is weaving? Today it's just a form of you know, art therapy, something you could do on a lazy Sunday afternoon after going down a spotlight getting your um, weaving goodies. But it has been used by multiple different peoples across multiple different countries and places for lots of different functions and purposes. Um, for example, in Russia they still weave um, and have been doing the weaving practices for thousands of years. In America, the indigenous people there, the Native Americans, use it as a form of data entry, weaving it in, um, creating knots within the weaving um, design to mark the data, mark the points, um, as maybe a form of abacus or other data entry forms, which is really cool. So for Indigenous Australians, Aboriginal people, traditional weaving is something that has continued and is still practiced um, since millennia, over 65,000 years. But what's important to acknowledge is that there are over 250 diverse nations in this country, which means that each nation has their own unique ways of knowing, understanding, um, ceremony, culture, and also their own ways of weaving. So that means that the way we weave here in Gadigal country might be different to how you weave down in Naranjeri country in South Australia. Um, so generally traditional weaving would be used with native materials um, locally. That's once again another example of how different um, nations have different forms of weaving. So it could be used for everyday practical use. So um, Unlike today, most often weaving is a fun arts activity. Um, traditional weaving would have been used as an everyday resource and it would have been heavily relied upon. Um, so here is a small scale fish trap. Um, so this is uh, Gadigal, this would be very, very prominent in Gadigal country of the kinds of uh, weaving uh, materials and objects you'd see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you'd also have different weaving materials uh, for ceremony, um, different objects for that kind of thing. And these things are still practiced today, but this is rooted in a traditional weaving um, sense. And we'll talk a little bit more about contemporary weaving later on and how that intertwines and uh, relates to each other. Um, but traditional weaving, as I said, is something that has been passed down for generations. Um, it's usually done among women, like you see today, me and Marnie together out on country weaving. This is a traditional practice that you would have seen 50,000 years ago on this very harbour. Um, but that's in a nutshell of, of broadly what traditional weaving is and what it represents. So that's some of the traditional uses of um, weaving or traditional function. Right? Now let's look at some traditional materials that we use in weaving. So in this area here, there's a lot of lamandra, which is one of the many materials that can be used for weaving. Now it does go through a lengthy process before we actually do weave with it. We can strip it down like I've done here. Um, but the next step does not take part for another couple of weeks because we have to dry that out. So we dry it out for about five weeks, we soak it in water for a bit, um, and if we want to change the colour of the material, that's when we do it. We add our dyeing materials, our dyeing agents like ochre or blood or um, berries, any sort of dyeing agent, we put that in the water and that soaks into the lamandra, creating different colours for us to use. Then we dry it out for another couple of days before we use it. And as you can see here, this is actually something that started weaving with Lamandra and we saw our fish trap here. Um, so this one here hasn't gone through the proper process and you can see it's a bit um, breakable and it's not as well done. Um, but that's why it goes to that lengthy process, so it is very um, tightly woven and very neat. It's a great little process. You can see here, you can see that one there. So that's also Lamandra, it's just completely dyed out. Now this one I don't think has been dyed, it's just a natural colour because the green does sort of leave the thing as it's done. But other materials we can use, in the cabbage tree palm, we take the, um, the rough sort of 
hairy texture part, sort of like on the outside of a coconut or a uh, gymea lily, those big um, leaves from the base of the gymea lily, excellent for weaving. You could also use the Castorina pine tree, the pine needles from that to weave. But there's so many different materials that can be used and um, done and like I said, lots of different dyeing agents. And it does change depending on where you're from. Again, as Aisha said, very diverse cultures and countries within Australia all having access to different plants, materials, dyeing agents. So traditional weaving has many different types of techniques and patterns. And these are techniques and patterns that have been used and crafted and engineered for thousands of years. And you might actually be quite familiar with some of these techniques if you've taken a home economics class or a textiles class in high school. Um, some of these stitches and patterns include the blanket stitch, the coil stitch, the loop stitch. Obviously, these are the Western English names for these particular techniques, but these are actually indigenous engineering and design uh, techniques that are used every day. Um, so as I said, these are techniques that have been passed down for generation to generation and are still being used today and in some cases make the basis of Western textiles and design. For example, we walk around every day in shirts and jeans that incorporate these indigenous forms of engineering um, and design techniques. So we see it every day and we even see it on the runway, maybe with Versace. So lots of different techniques, as we said, and like we said earlier, that varies depending on where um, you're from or what country, as it is a very diverse place, Australia, lots of different diverse cultures and countries. So here in the south coast on Gadigal land, it's more marshy, more wetlands, saltwater, sandstone sort of pe um, people here. So they had access to very different things to say um, desert people in central Australia. You can see a lot more bright colours within the works, their bright yellows and oranges, things that they had there, which reflects in their weaving techniques and their art. Whereas here, um, the colours and the um, techniques reflect what was most important here. And being saltwater sandstone people, it revolved around fishing and the animals here and the wildlife here. So we tend to use things um, from this area. Uh, gum nuts and eucalyptus leaves and uh, emu feathers all incorporated into the weaving here because you know there's a lot more access to that here um, and that also opens up trade as well you can trade with those neighboring countries and clans to um, get access to these things that you don't normally have and give them access to things that they wouldn't normally have so now we've taken a look at the different types of traditional weaving and how they vary on both a global scale um, and locally as well. Um, so now we're going to take a look at what contemporary weaving is and how it still interconnects with traditional methods um, that we've just learned. Um, so the most common thing with contemporary weaving is the different uses of materials. So obviously Aboriginal culture is the oldest living culture in the world which means that we're an adaptable culture and we'll start to incorporate new things into our culture um, depending on the changing environment. So you can see this here is a traditional um, sort of little fishnet incorporating contemporary materials. So we can see bright coloured yarns. You can even see some plastic incorporated as well. Um, so indigenous culture is a sustainable culture. Um, and some of the materials used in contemporary uh, weaving are upcycling, recycling, reusing uh, bits of plastic and paper. So you still see that general motif of sustainability um, and traditional weaving in uh, contemporary weaving today. So that's mainly the, the new colours um, that you can see here. In, uh, in contemporary weaving. And it's not just the colours, you also see different shapes start to evolve as well with contemporary weaving. Um, we're starting to see more um, sculptural elements of weaving that uh, lend itself from Western art, maybe in, in European art as well, with vases and, and different kinds of ornate sculptures. Um, so then weaving, uh, contemporary weaving starts to become more of an artistic uh, form of, of uh, representation which we see with these bright colours and, and new shapes as well. So there's so many different materials that are used now which is really great but we're going to look into um, just a quick tutorial demonstration of how um, to weave. Now we're going to use paper raffia 
Now, I'm going to use paper raffia. You could use whatever you like. Grab a plastic bag, cut it into strips, um, grab some wool, um, anything you like at all, and you could use that for your weaving. Go down to your local dollar shop. You can find little bits of raffia, spotlight, all sorts of places have it. Um, now, I'm going to use a needle because the needle is going to give me a tighter coil. Now, if I did it without a needle, needle, I would have to do the loops a lot further apart and it would start to look a little something like this, what I'm going to do. Now, with a needle, this is what it's going to look like. That's how it's going to work out a little bit. All right, so we're going to do a magic circle. There are lots of different ways to start um, weaving. There are lots of different styles and stuff, but that's what we're going to do today. Now, magic circle just means I'm going to grab my raffia and twist it into a circle, just like that, okay? Now I'm going to grab my color piece, my spine, and I'm going to add that in to that side just there of my circle. My needle is going to go around this side, through the middle, pull it up through. Now can you see this hole we've created here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that hole. Pull it nice and tight. And this is what, as we said earlier, um, you may know as a blanket stitch, okay? So the blanket stitch, here we go. And we're going to do that a couple more times. So again, around and in. And then here we go, pull it nice and tight. Now you see that little loop here? There's my needle, that one there. We want these to be um, pretty accessible because later on, quite a bit later on, we're actually going to use those to pull the needle through. Not yet, but just keep that in mind. All right. Again, so as you can see, I've started turning it around. And like I said, you just pull the edges in and that creates um, a smaller circle for you. And see, we've lost pretty much most of that little, yeah, the hole there. All right. And next what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two together. So these here all join up and become one big strand. Where's my needle again? There it is. Now what we're going to do again through the center, you can find that little hole there, go in through there, pull it through. And that's why the needle comes in handy to get you in there and then through the top again. And just keep in mind as well when you're doing it, the way you pull this here um, spine, this string, whatever you want to call it, is the way the basket's going to go as well. So if you pull this to the right, that means you're pulling it around into the right. If you pull it up, the basket's going to start coming up and you're going to have a very thin um, basket like these ones here. If you pull it out um, is how you want to, if you want to keep going out, make it at a wider base basket like these here. All right. So we do that one more time and then we're going to start using those loops that I showed you earlier. And remember, so we're going to pull it out and to the right. All right. Now I'm going to put this one down. Um, not yet, not yet. I'll do one or two. One or two more. Okay. Now, you can see these little loops here. Get nice and close. Those little loops in here. These are the ones we're going to start using now. So we go in here, and it's the exact same stitch. It's quite repetitive, <laughs> um, but it's also soothing, therapeutic, all that sort of stuff. So in through the loop, and again over through the top. And then you just want to keep pulling it in through each loop as you go around one at a time and then you start to get yeah. now what you can do as well is look on youtube youtube has so many different um videos 
uh, showing a lot of different techniques, styles, patterns, designs, materials, all sorts of things like that. Um, so you can see it being used with uh, plastic bags and wool and all sorts of things. You can see how to make um, uh, one that is more oval, like these ones here, how to make the fish trap, how to get these bigger ones, how to make the sculptures. So many different um, ones and they're all available on YouTube. How to start with the, uh, the magic circle, how to start with the more traditional weave. Um, lots of different ways. How to use traditional materials uh, properly, dyeing them. Um, so yeah, YouTube is the go. <laughs> so pull this one, which is this one here, and then I just pull it through, 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 until you can barely see it, until you can't see it. And then again with this one here, which I don't like this one. So I think I just want to get rid of that one altogether. Now when you get it to the shape, um, the size, the style you want, um, to end it off, which I can't really do here, I've got quite a bit going on. Let's, let's grab this one, it's easier to see because we've got the wall. So when we'll say this is not all there, we'll pretend that, we'll say that's all we've got left. What you're going to do is you're going to keep going around um, as if you're still weaving. Where's my, my needle? I love my needle. And needles, needles could have also been used prior to colonisation, not metal ones like we have today. Maybe they would have used um, bone or other such materials that were strong and um, easy to shape and use. Oh. Wool's a bit difficult. But basically all you're going to do is you're going to weave it, continue weaving it around um, until you've got that and hold it in place so really tightly. Oh. Hold on. Just talk about this one in terms yeah. of here's this one. This one would have taken you know yeah. hours, you know, and then finish up. <clears throat> so this one here, which is a mixture of raffia and wool, um, would have taken such a long time to make. It takes quite a while and quite a lot of practice, if I do say so. Um, could have taken like hours, days even, to get this here. <clears throat> this one here took a couple of hours and it's nowhere near the size of... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this one here took hours and it's nowhere near the size um, of the circular one. But in ending it off, you just want to tie it nice and tight, create a little knot. You could also uh, create a little handle with our, um, this one here is one of the early ones, first practice ones done, I think years ago, it's been here for a long time. Um, but create nice little handles, things like that. Create nice little designs and patterns within the weaving. Um, but again, YouTube gives you all sorts of different things to look at. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hope you've had an enjoyable viewing experience. Hopefully learnt a little bit, had a bit of fun. Hope you give weaving a go as well in the future. But on behalf of myself and Aisha, we want to say a big thank you for watching and yanu yanu.